Your Coca-Cola bottler presents Claudia, based on the famous play and novels by Rose Franken. Brought to you transcribed Monday through Friday by your friendly neighbor who bottles Coca-Cola. Relax, and while you're listening, refresh yourself. Have a Coke. And now, Claudia. Claudia! Hey, Claudia, where are you? I'm at the brook, David. What are you doing there? Meditating. What should one do at a brook? Mm, How is the brook? I'm fine. How are you, then? Not very brooky. No. I think it's running dry. Come to think of it, it's hardly running at all. That's because there hasn't been any rain for quite a while. A rainy June, a dry September. Where did you hear that? I didn't. I made it up. What a thought. Just look at this poor, sad little brook. Yeah, it's not much of one, is it? Maybe we ought to dam it up. David, don't be blasphemous. Oh, dear. Why the heart-rending sigh? Mm, nothing. Except I wish that today the brook was running a little more. It's so hot. A little more water here and we could go wading. I am not a wader. I'm a diver. But you like dunking donuts, don't you? The two don't go hand and foot. Oh, I'm suffocating, aren't you? Yes, but more quietly. Oh, it's no fun that way. You know, looking at that little gurgle of water is making my mouth water. Well, if your mouth waters enough, maybe we can go wading, hmm? Anything for a joke. Anything for a wade. Mm. You know, you're not very bright. I'm not? No, you haven't suggested the one thing we could do. Well, you haven't either. But I've thought of it. What is it? Go jump in a lake. Well, that is a fine thing to say to me. And I mean every word of it. <laughs> You'll find it very refreshing in the lake. Hmm? You're enough refreshing for me, darling. I don't like my water fresh either, thank you. Well, then go jump in the sound. David, are you serious? Really? Sure I am. The lovely, beautiful, cool, salty sound. Where is it? Well, you know where the sound is, between Connecticut and Long Island. I mean, where's the beach? How far is it from here? Oh, 15, 20 miles, maybe. What's the difference? None to me. I've got all day to swim in the sound. You stayed out in Eastbrook to work on the schoolhouse plans, didn't you? Mm, I'll work on them tonight. You sure you don't mind? Would it make any difference if I did? None at all. Then what's stopping us? Not a thing. It's a wonderful idea. You know, we haven't been swimming all summer. Hey, have you got a suit? Of course I have a suit. And then quick, say goodbye to this nasty brook, goodbye, and then we'll kiss brook. Mama goodbye and wave to the baby and hop in the car and away we'll go. Well, just as you said, away we go. You sure you have everything? Positive. Sunglasses, suits, towels, sunburn lotion. That's for my nose. Combs, bathing caps. That's where your hair. And that is everything. We have enough stuff to go on a safari. The sound is safari enough for me. I'll duck you for that one. (sighs) Now that we're on our way, I can't wait even more. David, slow up. Stop. What's the matter? Nothing. Except we're going by Jared Tucker's house. You pluck. I have just aged ten years. What for? I mean, why? David, stop, stop, stop. I thought I'd hit a dog or something. Oh, no, there's no dog around here. Uh, Just to answer my question. Yes? Did you have me stop this car just to tell me that that house is Jared Tucker's house? Of course not, silly. We want to go in and talk to him. We do? Yes. Well, what do we want to talk to him about? Ducks. Oh, ducks. Now, don't look so blank. You remember Mr. Tucker promised us a few ducks? Hey, there he is now. Mr. Tucker! yoo Mr. Tucker! See him, David? He's up by his barn. Listen, blow your horn. Go on, blow it. I don't know why we have to do this now. Now is as good a time as any. Blow! Nag, 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 nag. <laughs> He sees us. He's coming. He hears us. He's coming. David, I hope you don't mind our stopping now. Ooh. I like to do things when I think of them, or else I don't think of them. And you don't do them. That's right. Hello there, Mr. Tucker. Just there, thinking about you folks. Good or bad? Thinking about you and ducks. 
You and Tucker are soulmates. Ducks is what we're here about. Well, I ain't got around to herding them yet. Herding them? Uh, corralling them. Oh. But I aim to get to it right now. They're down the far end of the pond. If you'll come by in a little bit, I'll have yours in ready. That'll be perfect. Uh, much more convenient, as a matter of fact. I've just been aching to have our own ducks. Well, they're pleasant little critters. Like to make a racket, but what critters don't? <laughs> oh, you're so right. Now sit back, little critter, and we'll be on our way again. We'll be back in a few hours, Mr. Tucker. Well, blow your horn. If I don't answer, just come looking for me. I'll be on the place somewhere. Good enough. Well, I'll, I'll be seeing you. Right-o. All right. He's a wonderful neighbor, isn't he? Mm, isn't he, though? You see, uh, you see Jared Tucker, and you see what I'll be like when I'm near a hundred. Oh, I can't wait. I just can't wait. <laughs> David, can't you drive a little faster? I'm going 50 now. Feels so good, the wind. Lucky thing you hadn't herded those birds. We'd been taking them to the beach, if I know you. The most normal thing in the world. We'd be leading the ducks to water. Quack, 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 quack. David, we're here. Look, there's the sound. Yep, there'd be. It hardly took us any time at all to get here. Not quite an hour. Mm, looks nice, doesn't it? So blue. There aren't many other people here, are there? Mm, it's pretty late in the season. So much the better for us. We'll have to rent a bathhouse. Oh, I hate bathhouses. They're so, so... I know, I know. But it can't be helped. It's the nature of the beach. Mm. Now, out you get Hmm. Air is completely different here. Just wait till you taste it. Tastes salty. Tastes cooler. Standing here is like opening the door of a refrigerator. Well, something just flew out of your refrigerator and flew into my eye. Cinder, darling? Boulder Dam, I think. Oh, dear. It's pretty windy down here, isn't it? And swell. Isn't it, though? <laughs> Sound looks quite uh, rough, doesn't it? And very inviting. Oh, yes. Yeah. Very inviting. Well, should we get the bathhouse? Mm -hmm. Well, might as well, I guess. Funny, I thought there'd be lots of people swimming today. Well, maybe it's not as hot as we thought it was. I'm not hot anymore. Not, not, not a bit. That's good. Say, David, what are all those stones? Where? There, on the beach. It's not as sandy as I thought it'd be, either. Well, none of the beaches on the sound are. Oh, I yeah. see. <laughs> I like the sand better than stones. Except sand gets in everything. Yeah, it's in everything now. Mm, me too. My shoes. The tide's out. Very out. That makes the water very shallow for a long ways. You have to walk out and the bottom's full of shells. Shells are sharp. Very sharp. Mm. I don't like sharp shells. Neither do I. Ooh, I wish I'd brought a sweater. <laughs> well, I guess we might as well get into our suits. Yep, I guess we might. Only, um... Only you'd rather not. And you? Well, I, I wouldn't want you to catch cold. Oh, I wouldn't want you to either, darling. And it is cool. Yes, it is. David, you want to know something? <laughs> you don't have to say another word. Then you agree? Personally, I think it takes a lot more character not to go swimming than to go swimming. Oh, much more character. Loads of character. Especially when you come all the way to the beach. Oh, especially, especially. David, we're not sissies, are we? Of course not. We've been to the beach, haven't we? Why, well, I even have sand in my shoes to prove it. And a freckle on your nose. <laughs> that settles it. Let's go home. I'll take you to a delicious fish house on the way. Then I'll really feel as if I'd been swimming. <laughs> oh, David, it's wonderful when two people understand each other, isn't it? David, look at the sky. It's getting darker. It's a good thing we didn't stay at the beach. Mm. We'd have been caught in a fine storm. <sighs> we're very smart. Very. And we're almost home, too, which is even nicer. Here's Jared Tucker's place. We promised to pick up the ducks. Perfect. 
We'll still get home ahead of the storm. I don't see him around, do you? No, I don't. Well, let's drive in. He said he'd be home. Yoo-hoo, Mr. Tucker! Uh, we'll go up to the barn and look for him. No, I certainly wouldn't want to be a duck, David, swimming around in this weather. Do you? The last thing I'd want. <laughs> I bet he's up by the pond, herding in our ducks. Mm, you sound very professional. I am about to be a duck owner. I should. Hey, Mr. Tucker. He's always telling us he's not deaf. Mr. Tucker. I don't believe it, do you? He must be on the other side of the pond. It's not a very nice-looking pond, is it? Sort of, um, scummy. The ducks like it. That ducky tree leaning over into the water. I can't see where the ducks are. Claudia, Claudia, be careful. Oh, hey, David, help. Oh, help. Ah, ah, help. Oh. oh, David, it's so ooky on the bottom. Hmm. You're telling me. David, I'm all wet. I say you are. Fine business. You had to pull me in. David, I, I couldn't help it. I feel as if I were swimming in warm hair lotion. Well, at least it's warm. Oh, yes. my beautiful dress, my shoes. Mm. I must look handsome, too. You do? <laughs> like seaweed. Hello there, folks. Hi. In swimming? No, we just dropped in. <laughs> well, that's fine. Welcome any time. Yeah, that's fine, all right. It's great. Yeah. Couldn't even wait to get your clothes off. Well, you young folks will find it nicer swimming up the other end. There, uh, there are not so many ducks, you know. As you go about the day's work or play, as you drive or shop or take a stroll with friends, you often pause at the red cooler for ice-cold Coca-Cola. Now, you may not think of it this way, but your own home refrigerator can serve as a white cooler for Coke 24 hours a day. Just see that there's a supply of Coke in the house, keep plenty on ice, and delicious refreshment will await you whenever you open the refrigerator door. Say, uh, wait a minute, Mr. King. Hold on there a minute. Uh, yes, Mr. Tucker. Uh, what's your hurry? Why don't you drop by my place, sir? Would you like a duck? Oh, nice of you to ask, but uh, no duck, thank you. Uh, Mr. and Mrs. Norton been swimming. How about you? No, no ducking either, thank you. It's up to you. But I like to see young folks enjoying themselves. Oh, then you must really like having Claudia and David around. Yes, I do. You know, they have a capacity for enjoying themselves. On Monday, for instance, just an evening at home. Nothing happens. But it's fall and there's a harvest moon and... Well, it's just that kind of an evening. Well, I'll be eavesdropping. Are you sure now you won't change your mind about a duck? Positive. All right, then. Well, so long. So long, Mr. Tucker. Every day, Monday through Friday, Claudia comes to you transcribed with the best wishes of your friendly neighbor who bottles Coca-Cola. So listen again Monday at the same time. And now this is Joe King saying au revoir. And remember, whoever you are, whatever you do, wherever you may be, when you think of refreshment, think of Coca-Cola. For Coca-Cola makes any pause the pause that refreshes. And ice-cold Coca-Cola is everywhere. The parts of Claudia and David on this program were played by Catherine Bard and Paul Crabtree. And the entire production is supervised and directed by William Brown Maloney. And now, here's a word from your friendly neighbor who bottles Coca-Cola.